Hello friends, followers and channel members, welcome to another video here in Microsoft Flight Simulator and in today's video I'm going to be taking a look at a recently released piece of software which is called Simbox. Now the name doesn't give too much away but Simbox is essentially a control panel which allows you to then control your aircraft, in particular things like the autopilot, from a tablet or a phone or even go as far as creating custom 3D printer designed hardware for you to control and build a home cockpit. Simbox also provides you with 3D printing schematics so it literally is your passage to be able to create a home flight simulator in a box. Now if you're like me and you don't actually have access to a 3D printer or even the office space for one then Simbox can still be a useful tool because for the slightly cheaper price which doesn't include the 3D printed designs you can control your aircraft using the tablet and this has features such as controlling the autopilot, the lights, the radio panel and we're going to have a look at all of that and see how it works once we've got it set up. So Simbox is available for purchase on the developer's website. There's a link in the video description down below. Obviously you purchase it and then when you downloaded it you've also got a code that you'll have to fill in for uh, unlocking the program and then we've got access to the main program. Obviously if you want to go to the uh, developer's website you can click through the various uh, features just so you can see and the first thing that I will say is that this comes for a Microsoft Flight simulator the fly-by-wire a3 2nx as well as the PMDG and also most of the default aircraft so default GA aircraft are also compatible with Simbox but of course for airliner flying PMDG and the fly-by-wire now there are different versions of this also available to purchase as well so you've got what they call no knob and knob no knob meaning that you're just planning to use Simbox to control Control your aircraft using a tablet or a to other touchscreen device even works on your phone as well and of course you've then got either the option for Microsoft Flight Simulator, X-Plane or both. If you do decide that you are going to then use Simbox to create 3D uh, printed hardware then obviously make sure you select the knob version and uh, you will see obviously there is also a price increase as well. So let's uh, have a look at the program now we've got it all downloaded. So when you launch Simbox for the first time you can see that we're not connected to the simulator and not connected to USB. Well that makes sense because the USB connection is for the physical hardware that you may have printed off with the 3D printer. I'm not using that so we don't expect this to connect. The QR codes just here you can scan with your device such as phone or tablet that will then once you have got the Simbox app downloaded on either Apple Store or Google Play it will then sync the app up with your Microsoft Flight Simulator or X-Plane that's done automatically and it will have the IP address then of your computer all linked into your network which means that it's uh, now able to control your uh, your chosen aircraft however as we can see at the moment we are not connected to the simulator but quickly we'll go back to that in a moment so on the profiles you can see that here are the three profiles for Microsoft Flight Simulator that are available and of course if you're using X-Plane then there you can see the X-Plane uh, editions as well. You will need to download Simbox Connect for Microsoft Flight Simulator. This is again done through the Simbox app on your, uh, on your PC so that's done again in the background. Do all of this however before launching uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator or X-Plane. If you then go to the Documents tab, this brings up a very, very detailed uh, instruction uh, panel for everything about Simbox. Well worth the read because it will take you through every step of uh, setting it up and also explains exactly how Simbox works and what it does. You can see that I've got a little yellow dash telling me that Simbox needs an update. I'll explain a little reason about that in a uh, in a moment. Um, but the main thing that we're going to have to do now is get our Simbox connected up with our, uh, our tablet, our uh, external uh, touchscreen device, tablet or phone, but we need to get the simulator running to the control center. 
once you've got it installed you'll see this little icon here when this is clicked and turned white if we now go back into Simbox, we'll see that this is running. I've got my tablet in front of me as well now, so let's have a look and see how it all works. For this demonstration, we're going to be checking Simbox out in the Flyby Wire A32NX, and I'm currently flying the experimental version of this aircraft. So here we are inside the cockpit and as you can see on the autopilot panel in the simulator, the FCU, it matches completely with what I've currently got set on my tablet. Obviously these aren't the kind of values you'd find uh, the aircraft flying in the real world but just for uh, this demonstration, here you can see me swiping on the virtual knob if you're not using the, uh, the hardware configuration then it reflects in the simulator. You can see that that's uh, that's obviously changing the uh, the heading that the aircraft is uh, is going to uh, is going to take. And of course, with the altitude, it's exactly the same. Except we do get two uh, virtual dials here: the top one and the bottom one, which then control either the thousands of feet or the hundreds of feet. And of course, in the Airbus, you want to be able to push or pull these dials so you have managed mode or selective mode. Well, of course, that you can do as well down in the bottom left-hand corner so we can push and pull. I don't actually have a flight plan loaded for this demonstration, so I can't engage managed mode at the moment, plus because I'm in the, uh, in the heading mode rather than nav mode. But you get the idea that this all works. Now, I will say that I did find that it was sometimes a little slow to respond uh, on the tablet um, linking it up with the simulator. Now I think to be perfectly honest with you I'm using quite an old tablet. When I tried this on my phone which is a, um, a, a much newer device then it worked much much faster and of course everything else works as you'd expect it to. I can disengage the autopilot there we go that's gone and let's uh, let's take out the auto thrust as well one second uh, there we go uh, yeah, there you can see that's uh, that's gone as well. So having this set up in front uh, of you when you're uh, when you're on VATSIM or something like that could be really nice. And it just adds the immersion. No longer using a mouse, you've got something physical that you can touch to control your FCU. One of the things that I would really find this useful for is the radio panel page. Obviously, if you're on VATSIM and you're doing lots of other things as well, the fact that you're flying on a 2D screen means you're not always able to quickly look down and change the frequency that you're communicating on. Well, of course, that is done nice and simply using this piece of software. And of course, you can control the lights. As you can see, if I can just get my camera angles right so that you can see uh, the uh, in simulator lighting panel there we are so we can uh, tap these and it will then change the strobe lights and things like that now at the time of filming this video there was a slight bug with controlling the lights in the fly by wire a32nx experimental version however remember that little update icon that was being shown at the start of this video well that is the update to rectify this so no longer will I have any issues with the lights they will indeed all work exactly as they should so that was a very quick turnaround from the developer after speaking to him to report that bug. One of the other things that you'll find really useful with Simbox is the fact that you are not limited to just having one touchscreen device. In fact, whilst I was playing around with this, I'd got the tablet set up, I'd also got the phone set up as well. If you've got another tablet, of course, you could have three devices set up, one on each page, so you can customize it and literally have as many pages and tablets and touchscreens around as you wish to control your aircraft. Now, obviously, Simbox comes with three predefined presets for Microsoft Flight Simulator. That is for the A32NX from Fly-by-Wire, PMDG, and just a general aviation aircraft profile. But it's open source, so you are able to configure and create your own programs and then share it with your friends. During the testing process, there was no frame rate impact either, and the developers of Simbox do say that it is FPS friendly, of which, after testing, I concur. For me personally, however, the most impressive thing about Simbox is its simplicity, the setup. Download a program on your PC, download an app on your touchscreen device, the two link together just by scanning a QR code and everything's good to go with nothing else to do. It all works straight out of the box. 
I'd love to hear what you guys think about what you've seen in today's video and whether you think Simbox might be something that you'd consider for your flight simulation setup. For me personally, it's something that I would definitely want to use when I'm on the VATSIM network and I've got the ability now just to use touchscreen controls to control the radio panel and the lights on the overhead. Those things where usually I have to pan the camera around and use my mouse to select things and I can't continue the taxi or I sometimes end up going off the taxiway centerline because I'm not actually looking where I'm going. That has now been removed thanks to Simbox. I hope you found this video useful. Please do leave a like if that is the case. And of course, if you are new to the channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on the notifications bell so you don't miss any future videos or live streams. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you all again on the next one. Bye bye for now.